welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 144. Hard to believe, but yes, it is episode 144. And some of you last week said I really looked good. I was wearing makeup. I I generally do wear makeup. It just doesn't always show up. Um, But I was also wearing lipstick. So I tried to put lipstick on today so it looked better, but I'm hoping it's not on my teeth because that would be less than pretty. Anyway, let's get started. Um, I have a couple of finished objects. I have, last week I made two pot holders from the pattern that is called Made by Seam. Um, and if you Google Made by Seam pot holders, it'll show up in YouTube. Uh, but you can also get the link through Yoka's blog, and I'll put that down here as well. Anyway, um, one of you saw that and said you should make a trivet. So that was June Lee Sinclair had said you should make a third pot holder, but make it bigger and use it as a trivet. Wonderful idea. I did it. I took her up on the on the idea. I think it was an excellent idea. The pot holders look just like this. They're just a little teeny bit smaller. This is about I think two rows bigger. So it's not a huge, it's not huge, but it, it will work as a trivet. If you don't know what a trivet is, it is, it's like an oversized pot holder, but if you have like a casserole pan or something you don't want to put because of the heat, um, you don't want to put it on your table or on a countertop, you can lay down a trivet and put something hot on top of it and it just protects your table or your countertop. So I made a matching one to the pot holders. And then Yoka had also sent me a pattern for dishcloths. And I guess I could make these into pot holders as well if I held them double, but I didn't. And there is this one. These are for my daughter. As you know, her house caught fire and they lost everything. So they are in the process of rebuilding. So this is a dishcloth for her. And all of the pot holders are for her as well because she's going to do her kitchen um, in a green color. So those are for her. And I've got a few more dishcloths to make because uh, this is just the first one. So I'm hoping to get a couple more. I think I have two or three skeins more of this yarn. So hopefully I will have enough to put a nice little package together for her. Um, a little update. The... the um, Insurance company had people cleaning the house out yesterday, and apparently it's pretty nasty because there's mold growing in it now because of all the water damage from the putting the fire out. And, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, it's pretty nasty. Smells really bad because all of the stuff that's been in the deep freezers, she has two deep freezers full of food down in the basement, as well as the refrigerator and all of the food has been sitting there for a month now since the fire. And of course there's no electricity and well, the one freezer is actually fused shut because the, the rubber ceiling that, you know, closes your refrigerator door and keeps the seal. It actually melted it so you can't open it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nasty. So um, my son-in-law said every time he goes in there, it gets worse and worse. Anyway, that is getting cleaned out uh, yesterday and today, uh, which is Friday. So it was cleaned out Thursday and Friday, and they are going to be stripping the house all the way back to the studs at this point. So all that's going to be left of their house is going to pretty much be the skeleton, um, which is a good thing, which, you know, even that, that sounds pretty hard, but that's it's actually a good thing because that way they know that everything in that house has been fixed. You know, there's no, there's not going to be any hidden dangers from having an older house. Uh, so they know that all the wiring will be fine. All the plumbing will be fine. You know, all of the, they're having a new heating system. You know, everything is going to be replaced. So it'll have better insulation, which as an older house before it didn't. And, um, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be good when they get through all this, but it's just, Having it there, you know, having to watch your possessions get thrown into a dumpster is hard. Um, but anyway, they are all doing well, and they found six out of the seven baby quilts that my mother made. That's the one thing they were really looking for. Um, my mother has a Bernina sewing machine, and she hand quilted um, 
a like a wall hanging quilt for each of the grandchildren. And so there's seven. My daughter has seven children. They found six out of the seven. The only one they have not found yet uh, was the oldest grandson, who is 15, and he was like, you know, at, at 15, a boy is really not emotionally attached to the the baby quilt thing. So he's not heartbroken. You know, I mean, my daughter's upset that they couldn't find it, but, you know, my son, my grandson was like, I'm okay. You know, it's fine. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the update on them. And that's what I made for them. Now, the other thing, if you saw Instagram or Facebook earlier this week, I finished my Swedish lines shawl. And I'm going to hold it up. I'll show you where I was last week first. Oh. Couldn't find my stitch marker on here for a few minutes. So here is where I was at last week. You can see it right there. And then I did all the way up through here. Now the pattern called for four of these thin gray stripes here. I had extra gray yarn and just figured I would use it till I ran out. And so I got three more stripes in. I have almost an entire skein left of the white. Um, I'd say it's probably three quarters of a skein. So yeah, I've got lots of white left and I debated whether I should just keep making the shawl. That was my original plan is I was just going to use it till I ran out of yarn. Um, the gray, I pretty much ran out of. I did not have an, I had such a little bit left that there was not enough to go back and forth one more row. Um, but I thought about putting more white on it and just use it till it ran out or adding some gray that I had around the house. But when I saw the size that this was turning out at that point, I was like, I don't need a bigger shawl. This is, it's really a good size. So I will hold this up and then I will insert some shots of me modeling it. So here is the one end. This is where you start. It's asymmetrical, but by the time you finish it, it's more triangular. So it goes across here, and these are eyelet, you can see. And then it goes into some stripes, and it goes into some narrow stripes. So this was a very, very easy knit. The yarn is, it is so soft. I mean, if you pick this up, and put it all together, it looks like it is a small shawl. And it's very lightweight. But it is alpaca. It is so, so very, very soft. And alpaca does not have to be thick and heavy like wool to be warm. Um, so it's this is going to be nice and toasty around my shoulders. And it's perfect for me because, as you can see, I wear a lot of gray and I wear a lot of black. And this is something I need at a neutral shawl. And especially in church, I noticed like when they turn the fans on or the air conditioning, my shoulders get get uh, a little chilly. So this is nice because it's small enough. I can kind of wad it into a ball, throw it, throw it into my pocketbook. And if I need it, I can pull it out. So it, it doesn't take up much space, but it's nice and toasty warm. It's also nice to take on vacation or something because it can squish down into a suitcase. But yet it's a pretty si substantial size shawl. And like I said, it's very warm. If you like this pattern, again, it's called the Swedish Lines. It's from Blueprint. Blueprint is having a sale right now, and this is in their clearance. This pattern, the pattern and the yarn, you can get right now for $18.80, which is really a good deal because you get, like I said, all the yarn, and you get the pattern too. And you don't have to do it in gray and white. They give you a selection. You choose a light color for the main color, and then you pick a contrasting color. So um, you can do it in any color combination you want. It's mostly garter stitch. There is a make one, which is an increase. And there are yarn overs and knit two togethers, which is what creates this eyelet lace here. So it's a very, very simple pattern. If you are a beginner knitter, you could do this. It has an eye cord bind off, which just means, if you can see this, I'm looking to see how it shows in the monitor. It's just a rounded edge, and I love I-cord bind-offs, as you know. I've been doing them a bit on some of my blankets and stuff, just because I think it gives such a nice finished edge that I just have fallen in love with that. So one edge is not. One edge is just a 
like a garter stitch edge here. But the I-cord bind off is here and on the other side of it. Over here is also an I-cord bind off. So, yes. This was probably one that I will make again because it was so easy that it's a nice, fast, like a gift knit for somebody. So, yes, again, this is the Swedish Lines from Blueprint. So you can see how big this is when I put it on. It hangs over my shoulders quite well. And across the back, it comes down to below my hips. And here is what it looks like. I can't even stretch it all the way out. It's still hanging off the edge of my hands on this side. But there it is. Now you may be wondering, why am I not filming up in my craft cave? Um, I forgot to explain at the beginning of the video what is going on. Uh, Dave's not home today, and we are expecting a delivery at any time, and if I'm upstairs, I can't hear the doorbell ring. So I'm filming, if you see me jump up, it's because delivery has arrived. So um, anyway, that's why I'm downstairs today. So now let's get started on what I'm working on now. I have another dishcloth going for my daughter. This is the same as the other one that I showed you that I'm working on. So I just, I've just literally started this the other night. So this is how much is left of this skein. And I think I have one or two more skeins of this left. So I should be able to get at least one or two, or at least, well, I know one. I'll probably get two more dishcloths. That's the goal. I'm hoping to get a total of three dishcloths uh, before I'm finished. So, um, this particular yarn goes from a blue, and then it goes into this, which is not showing up as a blue. It's, I mean, it's it's not showing up well, but this is a turquoise -y color, so it has greens and blues and whites in it. So I just don't know that it, green doesn't show up well on camera for some reason. So um, it, it always looks blue. But anyway, this is blue, and then it transfers into greens, different shades of greens and a white. So that's project number one. Project number two is my scrappy blanket, and I have literally gotten to the end of my first ball with this. That's all that's left. I'm on the last color of the first ball of yarn. I have a total of three more balls of yarn left, which will probably finish this up. It'll be just about perfect. Uh, so here's how big it is. And I've done six rows since last week. You can see here was my stitch marker. And so I've done up here. And this is the very last color that I'm working on right now. And like I said, I've, I've literally got just a couple of yards, maybe a yard or two left of it. So yeah, that is my scrappy blanket. And this is the shell stitch that I'm doing. And these are all little scraps that are either left over from projects or ones that I've hand dyed. Um, I have bought some of the bear yarn from Knit Picks before. And actually one of you and I were talking about this uh, over the week. Uh, I actually have bought some of the Knit Picks bear yarn, which means it doesn't have a dye on it, it's just plain. And then I cut them into, if it's like a 100 gram ball, I cut them into 10 gram like little mini skeins, and that way I can play with dyeing, and I do not do fancy dyeing. I just do it with food coloring. All you need is vinegar, food coloring, and plastic wrap, and you can, you can dye. Um, and it's not toxic. Some of the uh, acid dyes you have to really watch because of the fumes and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to fool with that, so I dye with either Kool-Aid or um, food coloring. You can also use Easter egg dye. Um, Anyway, so some of the yarn that I have here is made from some yarns that I have dyed. Uh, some of it is some that I bought off of eBay. And uh, yeah, so it's fun and it's going fast. It's my kind of relaxation crochet because I don't have to think about it. There's no pattern involved. It's just simply the shell stitch all the way across. 
And I think it goes fast because you just get used to one color and then the color changes, so you're always kind of anticipating the next color. So it just kind of keeps it from being boring, and I'm having fun with it. I really am. This is, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this, I think, more than my knitted scrappy blanket. Um, and I did enjoy my knitted scrappy blanket, but by the end I was so sick of making mitered squares where this, for some reason, I'm it's going quicker. I think that's some of it, too. It goes quicker. So... I'm enjoying it, and that is work in progress number two. Work in progress number three you guys are going to laugh at because I ordered more yarn, and it turns out I didn't need it. So now I'm going to have a plethora of orange yarn. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it all. But anyway, let me explain what happened. I was knitting away on my sweater, and I'll show you how far I've gotten. Here's where I was last week, and I've knitted down to here, so I've done about two inches. I'm on the body of the sweater now because this is where the arms are separated for the sleeves. And I was knitting away. This is still my first ball of this, which is an orange bamboo cotton. And then I have this, which is... Um, what is this stuff? This is Lana Grossa. Okay. It is a brand. I mean, Lana Grossa is still around, but this particular type of yarn that they made is discontinued. You can't get any more of it. It is like a nylon y cotton stuff. I think they discontinued it because it's very snaggy. If your hands have rough, rough spots, it snags with this. And I, I actually, it's the only thing I don't like about it. It's very, very soft. It's different shades of orange. It might look yellow in the camera, but it is orange. The darkest part of it is not quite as dark as this, but this is like the darkest orange it goes to, and then it goes to a real light, kind of a creamy orange here. It is very soft, and it's a woven type of tube. I don't know if it'll show up here or not. No. My camera doesn't do close-ups well. Um, but it's a like a woven tube, and then they blow the fiber into the tube. So um, it has a lot of stretch to it. Anyway, I was working on these two skeins and saw that this is how far into the sweater I am. I looked into my bag. Now, this is my, this is my high-priced project bag. Yes, we talked about this with the DIY thing. I told you I store my projects in one gallon Ziploc bags. There it is. Except that the bag had popped open and some skeins of yarn had fallen out. So when I saw the bag of yarn, all I saw was this left. And I went, oh no, there's no way this is enough to make the rest of the sweater. I'm, I'm up a creek without a paddle. Now what am I gonna do? Because I knew I couldn't get any more of this yarn. So I went online and I ordered more of this yarn. This is Baby Love now, or Baby Show. It comes from China. It is super, super cheap. I think it's like a dollar or two a skein. It's bamboo cotton. It's extremely soft. Um, I love this stuff. I do have quite a bit of it because, like I said, it's cheap and and it's very soft, and I like it. I think, I think most of the yarn I have gotten off of eBay from China um, has been really actually decent yarn. I bought some um, lace weight wool yarn oh, quite a while back. It was very, I was very pleased with the quality of yarn, especially for, you know, a dollar or two a skein. You can't beat it. Um, but anyway, I went and bought two more skeins of this because I thought that this was all I had left. And then I realized that the bag had actually popped open and I had another ball of this and this ball here, which will probably be plenty to finish my sweater out with. So it's either going to turn into a really big sweater or I'm going to have orange yarn left. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see how, how much I end up using with this sweater because who knows, maybe I'll make, maybe I'll make it longer. So now that I know I've got more of this coming, I was doing like four rows of this and one row of this. 
So now I've been changing like two or three rows and doing a row of this since I know that I'm going to have plenty of it uh, to make it stretch out as far as I possibly can. So that is my sweater saga for this week. Now I have my my crochet wrap that I'm working on and I have done a little bit of work on the sides of it this week. Last week I had finished the striping which is right here. So this week this was the color I striped with is this and this. So they striped through here and now there's this pattern which is kind of just a lattice work type of pattern. And I have that on both sides. I'm being careful how I hold this up because the yarn is still attached on both ends and if I pull it I'm going to have all the stitches rip out. Um, so I've done it on both sides. So you can see it there. There it is in the, at the tips. So now I'm getting ready to stripe. It's going to stripe with this color, this color, and this color. So this is a tonal blue, and this has no blue in it whatsoever, but that's what it's going to stripe with. So let's see if I can hold two balls up together. There we go. So those are the things it's going to stripe together with. So that'll be this week's project with the wrap. So what am I going to be working on next? Now that I've finished the Swedish line shawl, what is my next project? I, I was going to make um, the begonia swirl shawl, which one of you was making too, because you and I talked about it. And I went upstairs today and I was pulling out the yarn and I'm making it out of painted desert yarn, which is this yarn here. Um, it's a different color. This is the one that was for the prize giveaway. Um, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the one that I'm going to make is, it's the same type of yarn that has kind of a tweed to it. There you can see. Except that the one I have is like pinks and a green, kind of like Easter egg type of colors. Um, lots of pastels. And so that's what I was going to make as my next project except that I want to put some beads on it. The pattern does not call for beads, but I want to put some on it. And I have these really pretty iridescent beads that will go perfect with it. Can't find it. So I need to, until I can find those little beads, I can't start that project. And I saw them recently. I just am not sure where I saw them at. So I need to do a little work up in the craft cave because I'm going to be doing a little redecorating, reorganizing type of thing. We're getting a couple extra shelving stuff. And so because the shelves I've got upstairs, if you push them, they kind of do this. And I'm a little leery of them tipping over on one of the grandkids when they're up there because I'm afraid they're finally going to give out. They're about 20 years old and they're just pine and they're screwed together and they're not real sturdy anymore. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a little reorganization up there. When I do, I, I, I will film it and you guys can see what I do. But hopefully when I do that, I will find the little iridescent color beads so that I can um, – start on that project because it's definitely a summer type of shawl just based on the colors, although it would be pretty for Easter too. So anyway, because I can't find it, I thought, well, I need to get started on my Christmas presents. So I am making a cowl for my mom and my daughter and my daughter-in-law. So this one, I have two skeins of each of these. I got these when I was on, I believe on vacation last year up at Webb's. It's 100% wool. It's called Wisdom Yarns and it's poems. Let's just have a colorway. It does not. It is from Universal Yarn. Oh yes it does. It says it's romance. That's the color. It's made in Turkey. It's a Universal Yarn. It is a worsted weight because it says you can use a size 8 needle. And it's a 50 gram ball. There's 175 ounces, uh, 109 yards or 100 meters. So here it is. And it's what they call singles. In other words, it's not plied. It's just, if you just spun this once and didn't ply it together, it's called a single. 
and it's very loosely spun. So I'll have to be careful when I knit this that I don't pull too tight because it could pull the fiber. It doesn't seem to be too flimsy, so I don't think it will. But sometimes when it's loose like this, you can actually knit, if you're a tight knitter or crocheter, you can actually pull the yarn apart. But this is the one I'm going to do for my daughter-in-law. And it's pinks and grays and kind of a flesh color here. That's not showing up really well. Maybe a little bit better there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pinks and grays, and those are the colors that she likes to wear a lot. So that one's going to be for my daughter-in-law. And then one of these, I'm not sure which. One of these will be for my daughter. This is all neutral colors. I tend to think this one for my daughter. It has kind of a slight peachy pink right here. Uh, but the rest of it is grays and browns and things. I'm thinking it would be nice and neutral. She could wear with things. And this is also the same brand. And the color is called... Yeah, the color is missing on this. I'm thinking that it might be underneath the SKU sticker. So, um, yeah, it's, this is color 305 for whatever it is. Whatever it is. But it's the same yarn. And then the other one that will be probably for my mother, because my mother tends to wear darker colors. Um, if not, this will go to, to um, my daughter. So I'll have to figure out who wants which. But this is, again, the same yarn. And this one is called Hearth. And that makes sense because it's kind of got smoky colors. That might not be a good cho choice for my daughter with, this, with the house fire. But anyway, it's got grays and tans, and it has a red. Um, and then it has a darker tan over here. So it's got some really pretty colors, and I could see her wearing this. Maybe I won't tell her what it's called, though, Hearth. Uh, that might not be good since your house has just caught fire and burned down. So anyway, uh, that's what my next projects are going to be, is three different cowls for Christmas. And again, because they go together, they're in my um, very expensive $1 or one-gallon Ziploc bag. I get them at the Dollar Tree. It's like 15 to a box for a dollar. So I I do store my projects in here. When I know I've got yarn that's going to go together for something, I store them in this. So anyway, that's my project coming up. So now let's take a look at what you are making.
Now, last week I announced a prize winner, um, and the prize winner was Madonna Ballard, and she won this painted desert yarn. Now, I was going to just give her a week to come forward to claim her prize. However, she does have a podcast, and I was watching the podcast, and she said in the podcast that she was going to be in the hospital. So I know that there's a very strong chance she has not seen this because she's in the hospital. So anyway, um, I think you guys will understand if I say I'm going to give her a little bit longer um, to come forward. So um, anyway, I hope everything goes well for you, Madonna, at the hospital. And come claim your prize and I'll get it mailed out to you right away. So I have tried to contact her, but like I said, with her being in the hospital, um, you know, I'm sure that that's the last thing on her mind right now. So that takes care of everything except for our now in our coming come and get it section this week, we have Annie's is offering 30% off of all of their out of print download patterns. So, um, that is a good deal. If you know some patterns that you're interested in, uh, you can get the download, which means you download it to your computer. Uh, but it's 30% off of the ones that are out of print right now. They also, over in their crochet, crochet section, they have a, um, a pattern. It's called Crochet 3-in-1 Crochet Shawl Scarf. It sounded a little intriguing because it looks like a it looks like a shawl in the picture, but I'm not sure what three in one means. I I can get it that you could use it as a shawl or a scarf, but I'm not sure what the other third thing is you can use it for. So that was over in their crochet section, and then over in their knit section they have a thing called the patent poncho. I really like it. It's got a lot of cables and it's more of a, a squared off looking poncho, and I like the squared ones better. Um, because the pointed ones, unless they really hang down far, um, it just looks kind of weird on me, you know, unless they, and if they hang down far enough to like cover my sides or whatever, then the points hang down to my knees and that doesn't look good either. So I tend to like the squared off. I don't own any of the squared off ones, but I like the squared off ones more than the, uh, the pointy ones. The pointy ones look good hanging up, but on me, the, the pointy ones don't look as good. So, um, anyway. It is a squared off poncho and it's called patent poncho. Blueprint until August 4th. Now I did put up a short video earlier this week because the um, sale that they're running only ran from August 1st until August 4th. Uh, they are offering 70% off of their kits and supplies. And that's where I was telling you about the Swedish line shawl that I made that you can now get in clearance for $18.80. So that is Blueprint. Over in Consumer Crafts, they are offering Lily Sugar and Cream for $1.97. They are also offering um, up to 70% off. Is that 70% off? I'll put it down here. They have a percentage off of their in their clearance section right now as well. Um, Create for Less has Aunt Lydia's number 10 crochet thread. That's the type you make doilies with. They are offering that for $2.39 or up to $2.99. So I guess it depends on the color or whatever. They also have Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo Yarn on sale for $8.29 to $8.49 right now. Now over in Hobium, their Stars of the Month, uh, which is their special for the month that they are, they are advertising. They have several different yarns. They have Yarn Art Summer Yarn, which is a cotton viscose blend. They have Kartopu Merino for $3.68, or if you buy more than one skein, you can get it for $3.31. So that's a good deal. Over um, in their Stars of August also, they have their Gazelle Arctic, which is a merino nylon acrylic blend. And they also have Kartopu Punto, which is an acrylic polyamide, but it's a chunky yarn. So those are the things that are 
25% off over in their stars of the month section, but they also have clearance yarns as well. So, um, and Hobium and Ice yarn both work the same way. If you buy one skein, you pay one price, but if you buy it in a bundle of five to 10, or depending on how they're selling it, it could be three, five, or 10. Um, the more skeins you buy, you know, as, as far as like in a bundle, the cheaper the yarn gets per skein. So Knit Crate is offering 20% off of your first subscription box. You do need to use the coupon code KCREATIONS20 to get that. Knit Picks, their 20% yarn off yarn of the month. They always have one yarn that they highlight and offer 20% off. Um, this month they have two that they are offering. One is the Capra, which is a cash merino blend. So it's cashmere and merino. It's a fingering weight and it's $7.19, which is really reasonable for a cash, cashmere and merino. It's going to be extremely soft. Uh, for $7.19, that's a decent price. And then they are also offering a um, Capretta. Capretta is a cashmere merino nylon mix, and it's a DK weight, and it is it is $7.99. So um, those are over in Knit Picks. Leisure Arts is offering a couple of patterns. I always look through to see what the patterns are that they've got on sale. Uh, to see what or what they are highlighting for the month or whatever to see what's interesting. And they had a crochet retro Christmas ornaments, which I thought was kind of interesting because I remember Christmas ornaments that were crocheted when I was a kid. Um, so they it, the book itself has 15 ornaments in it. It is a download, so it's not a paper version. It's one you download to your computer. It is $9.99. And in the knitting section, okay, so the retro crochet ornaments is, I mean, if the retro Christmas ornaments are crochet, uh, in the knit section, they have a Stitch a Garden book. Again, it's a downloaded book, um, but it's all different garden things. It's it's sort of like the crocheted version of Amigurumi, except it's knitted, because I looked at it and thought for sure it was crocheted, and then I read the book, and I was like, no, it's knitted. Um, so if you like to do things like that, but you don't know how to crochet, this might be an option. And it's all kinds of like gardeny stuff, like flowers and vegetables and cacti. I saw some cactus in the picture, things like that. I guess it'd be cac cacti, not cactuses, cacti. So anyway, um, yes, it's called knit, knit, or no, it's called stitch a garden and it is $4.99. Over in Lion Brand, they are offering 40% off of all their yarn and kits. Again, this is a, a really, really good deal. 40% off of all of their yarn and kits. You do need to use a coupon code SAVE40AUG. A -U -G. I'll put it down here. And they're offering up to 75% off in their clearance section. So that is Lion Brand. And then over in Ice Yarn, they are having a summer sale up to 90% off. Now, don't forget ice yarn. Like I said, the same with Hobium. The more yarn you order, the cheaper it gets per skein. And they have a clearance section and they have a closeout section. So make sure you check them out because that's where the bargains are to be had. So um, those are all good ones to check out. And if you're interested in any of these, uh, sales that I've mentioned. If you click down below in the description box, it'll say show more. Click the show more. They all drop down. You click on one of those links, it'll take you right over to that page where the sale is at. I do get a small commission out of any of the sales, which helps to support the channel. So Wednesday's video this week is going to be uh, the photos from the Tour de Fleece. As you are aware, uh, several of people in our our group here participated. Two in particular sent pictures in, and so I have taken all the pictures that they put over on Facebook and on the and Yoka had put on her blog, as well as on Facebook. And I've combined them all so that if you don't get Facebook or you don't follow Yoka's blog, um, you can still check out and see what they made. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, that participated, and Yoka actually won a shirt, her t-shirt, something like that. Um, 
So anyway, uh, stay tuned on Wednesday to be able to watch that because I guarantee it'll be a lot of fun and you will be amazed at the amount of spinning these two ladies did. So that is it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again on Wednesday.